I'd like to solve some constant acceleration problems, a variety of them, and we'll start with this one. On a dry road, a car with good tires may be able to brake with a deceleration, a slowing down of 4.92 meters per second squared. That's actually pretty good braking. That'd be half a G of acceleration. How long does it take a car traveling at 70 miles per hour, that's 31.3 meters per second, to come to rest? And I can write down my constant acceleration equations here. They are x equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. All my motion here is going to be in the x direction, so I'm not going to bother with putting a little x on the velocity here. Uh, let's see, I've also got v equals v naught plus a t. And perhaps I will use the equation v squared minus v naught squared is 2a delta x. Now, I know the values of uh, v naught and the acceleration here. I can let x naught equal 0 without any problem. x naught will be the position at which the acceleration starts. So I'll just define that to be 0. Let's see, V naught I'm given is 31.3 meters per second. We're also given that in the American system of units, 70 miles per hour, but I don't want to use that because my acceleration is in the metric system. And the acceleration is opposite the velocity. We're stopping the car after all, and that would be minus 4.92 meters per second squared. Okay, the first question, how long it does it take to stop the car? Well, when I stop the car, the velocity will be zero. I know the initial velocity and I know the acceleration. The easy equation for solving part A is going to be the one involving velocity. So V equals V naught plus a t, the velocity is going to be zero at the end, so I set that equal to zero. If I solve for the time, I would get t is minus v naught over a. Well, just plug in the numbers here. Let's see what we get. Uh, minus v naught was 31.3 meters per second. The acceleration is negative 4.92 meters per second squared. What I get for a result on that is 6.36. .36. Now, unit-wise, I've got meters per second on top, meters per second squared on the bottom. If I invert that and multiply, I'll end up with seconds. So 6.36 .36 seconds. How far will it travel in this time? See if we can figure that out. Actually, there are a couple ways I can figure it out, but I can use my x versus t equation here. Uh, remember, x naught is 0, and I'll have x equals v naught t plus 1 half a t squared. This is a matter of just plugging the numbers directly into here. And V naught again was 31.3 meters per second times the T that I found here, 6.36 .36 seconds minus one half times A, which is, or excuse me, plus one-half times minus 4.92 meters per second squared. I was putting that minus sign in there because I was thinking a step ahead, but shouldn't do that. 6.36 .36 seconds squared. Look at this carefully for the units, see if they work. 
I multiply meters per second times seconds, I'll get meters. That's a distance. If I multiply meters per second squared times seconds squared, I'll also get meters. So I can combine those two. They have the same units. Something to notice here, this v naught t term is how far the car would go if it was not accelerating. This term here, which ends up being negative, gets subtracted away from this because the car is coming to rest. Now, I'll have to finish this on a new page. I'll try not to make things too distracting here. I get a distance of x equals 99.6 meters. Now, that's uh, a ways. Let's see, if I convert that into feet, multiply that by 3.28 feet per meter, I find out that the car travels 327 feet while it's coming to rest. That's as long as the length of a football field. Actually, a little bit longer than that. It's the length of a football field from one goal line all the way to the opposite goal line and almost to the end of the end zone, the opposite end zone.